The space weather is really quiet this week, which is a far cry from what it was a couple weeks ago, but it won't last. We have a coronal hole that's going to be rotating into the Earth's strike zone. Will it give us a solar storm in time for Halloween? Those stories and more in the news this week. Despite having a couple really good solar storms over the past two weeks or so, the space weather this week has gotten really quiet, but it's not going to last. We have a coronal hole that's going to be rotating into the Earth strike zone here in the next day or so. It's sending us some fast wind, and that should pop us up into storm levels, maybe not in time for Halloween. But there's nothing cooler than getting pictures of spooky aurora over a graveyard near this time of year. Switching to our M flare threat meter, you can see we've been extremely quiet. Uh, this is a trend that's been going on for quite some time. We're well below the sea floor, so the X ray flux is very low. This also means the solar flux is kind of at low levels. We did momentarily have an M1.1 flare that, that fired from old region 2673. This was that region that was an X flare player back in September. But when it actually rotated into view, we thought, wow, is this thing beginning to act up all over again? No, it's not. It just kind of died off, and we haven't seen anything since then. So things are going to continue to be quiet like this for the foreseeable future. Switching to your solar storm conditions, you can see back on the 11th, we got hit with some fast wind that gave us some decent solar storming. The storming actually lasted about five days, nearly a week, and we bumped up to even moderate level storm conditions for a while. After that, things kind of quieted down till about the 24th, where we got popped again by some more fast wind. This is going to be pretty common during this uh, declining phase of the solar cycle. And we bumped up to storm conditions, not quite as strong and not quite as long lasting, but it's still gave us some decent aurora. Now things have quieted down, it's gotten extremely quiet, but again this won't last. We're expecting that fast wind to hit us again here in the next few days. And the last couple solar storms have brought us some gorgeous aurora all around the world. I can't possibly show you all the pictures, so here's just a sampling. We'll start with some gorgeous aurora that was sandwiched with this bubble-like uh, atmospheric effect due to a Russian missile launch. And this was in Russia, obviously. But you could also see that atmospheric effect as like a blue aurora, in, even in Sweden. And then there's gorgeous aurora we saw in Norway. There's a couple places in Norway. We saw it in Shetland and the Isle of Lewis. We saw it in Northumberland in the UK. And we move across the pond. We see it in Canada. Here's Manitoba and Saskatchewan, and Alberta. And if we drop into the United States, we saw it in Montana, in Washington State, and it even reached as far south as Wyoming. So what else does the sun have in store for us this week? Well, this is Stereo A. It's our backside monitor. You can see here's Earth, here's the sun, and here's Stereo A staring at the sun from behind. And what you can see is the sun, even on the backside, is pretty quiet right now. We do still have that coronal hole that gave us some activity about a couple weeks ago, maybe, maybe three weeks ago now. It is going to be rotating back into Earth view, so it could give us some more solar storming here, you know, maybe the middle of November. Now, we also also have an active region that's been spitting off a little bit of stuff. It's been maintaining uh, a bit of brightness here, and it will be rotating into Earth view here in the next week. So at least the solar flux will stay up for you amateur radio operators. Switching to your solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we are anticipating the hit from that fast wind from that coronal hole that's rotating into the Earth strike zone. At high latitudes, NOAA is expecting us to reach storm conditions around November 2nd with about a 30% chance of a major storm. At mid latitudes, we're only expecting about active conditions with only a small chance of a minor storm. And these conditions should last uh, in through the early part of the weekend and then probably die off reasonably quickly so that by the beginning of next week, we should be back to quiet.
Switching to your solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the coming week, everything is in the green. We have no threat for radio blackouts this week. Uh, that's good news for you uh, GPS operators, but for you amateur radio operators, it's a bit of a different story. We are getting to the low end of the solar flux for marginal propagation of ham radio, and this is going to continue easily for the next week. As a matter of fact, it might even worsen for the next week until we get a little bit of boost in the solar flux. So the space weather this week has been pretty quiet, but it is picking up. We have that fast wind from that corona hole that's rotating into the Earth strike zone, and it should be bumping us up to storm levels here in the next few days. So your aurora photographers, get your cameras ready, because you might be able to catch some enchanting and haunting shots just in time for Halloween. Now, you amateur radio operators, you may not be faring quite so well because the solar flux continues to decline and will so probably through the rest of this week. So if you can make it through this weekend, you'll be all right because then the solar flux might bump back up a bit. So it may not be quite as exciting a Halloween for you. But as for me, I finally get to put on my favorite Halloween costume. I'm the Eclipse. Can you tell? I'm Tamitha Scove. Thank you for watching.